Hello everybody, this is Broker Alerts. I'm Matthew Bransgrove. I'm Sarah O'Barton. And I'm Stephen Denty. Today we're going to be talking about two connected brokers who were pinged by AFCA for $257,000. And Sarah, they didn't even get any brokerage. No, that's right. So what'd they do? Uh, just to help her. They were just trying to help someone yeah. in, a, yeah. in a difficult position. Yeah. Okay, alright. So Stephen, you're a broker. Tell us what happened and what you would have done. So basically, the lady had property here in New South Wales. She wanted to buy a property in Queensland. Um, so it's pretty extensively bridging finance. Um, when the brokers checked on the background of all of this, they discovered the property here. One was residential, one was commercial. They discovered a block of land that had a rate arrears. Um, the first lender they went to, um, which I'm assuming would be one of the majors, went nut because of those issues. Um, the brokers then suggested to the woman, look, there is somebody else, and that was a private lender, and that's when it all fell apart. Okay. All right. What would you have done in this situation? Bear in mind, she's a pensioner. Yeah. So yeah. She's got no income. Yeah. She's on default um, with her, with her um, rates. Right. So she obviously can't afford to okay. have these properties in the first place. Yeah. Um, I would have suggested to her that the best way forward, sell the existing properties first, put the money in the bank, and then go and look to buy something. Okay. Now, she had already paid a deposit up in Queensland. She had, but the issue is Queensland, this is where it's confusing, the Queensland contracts are subject to finance, and if you don't get the finance, then you get your deposit back. Okay, interesting. Because in the the African decision, as I was reading it, um, they, they were motivated mainly, these brokers say they were motivated mainly to help her so that she wouldn't lose her deposit. It could be a case of they were not familiar with the law in Queensland yep. and, and were not aware of the fact that there is this finance clause. Well, I'm a private lender. I'm a private lender solicitor. That's all I do. Same with Sarah. We wouldn't touch this loan with a barge pole. Um, the fact that she's elderly and she's on a pension, that is not an appropriate loan for a, a private loan. You know, they, they've got to be commercial. That's right. And Sarah, they dressed it up and said the private loan was, was for business purposes. Was for business purposes. Yes. And that was a lie. It was a lie. Okay. But the brokers didn't do that. The lenders did that. It was in the lenders' uh, loan offer. Yeah. Okay. So reasonably shonky lenders. Yes. Mm. Now, because private lenders aren't subject to AFCA's determination. No. So AFCA had to vent all its rage and fury on the... The residential brokers. Okay. Because they're members of AFCA. That's right. They're subject to its jurisdiction. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, Steve, um, what sort of lessons do you think brokers can learn from this sorry tale? It is a very sorry tale, and that is that, and I've been subject to this too, you get a person come to you, your heart bleeds for them, you bend over backwards trying to help them achieve what they want, which in this case was to get a new home. It came back and bit them on the bum. Yeah, 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 that's right. Well, look, I mean, I've been a solicitor now for 30 years, and back in the beginning, I remember people with terrible situations would come to me. And a lot of them, I mean, sometimes you can help people, but if someone's in the trap and screaming, uh, it seems to me you're only going to get yourself in trouble by trying to help them and then fail. Uh, so, Steve, what do you think the prognosis was for this uh, deal to succeed? We, we know it went pear-shaped, but looking uh, without the benefit of hindsight, looking forward, what would you think? The fact that there were multiple properties that the woman had to sell, the fact that one of them was commercial, the fact that she was in arrears, meant that there was no way we could go to a main uh, stream lender and second tier lenders or, or private lenders was the only potential solution. But even that was fraught with danger. Yeah, I would have thought so because a reputable private lender wouldn't be lending to someone with a, with a pension and lending in circumstances where they had to sell properties that might not get sold on time. You know, Sarah, I also didn't like the fact the loan was only for six months. I mean, yeah. what do you think about that? Uh, it's too short to sell three properties yeah. in six months. So if you're going to do it for a legit person with an income, you'd probably make it a one-year loan. That's right. Okay. So what's the break cost on a private loan? Uh, if if you if you do it for a year and then it refinances after six months, it's about one to three months. One to three months, yeah. And often uh, that can be negotiated so that if the loan goes for a minimum of six months, there is no break cost. That's right. Yeah. So I, I mean, writing a six month loan for a pensioner, uh, I think you're right, Stephen. This was a train wreck. And when you 
like if you only have one property to sell, you could say, okay, that's sort of reasonable. Yeah. But when there's three, and yeah. I say residential, commercial, land, all right, too hard. So we agree with AFCA that they shouldn't have done this loan. They should not have done the loan. All right. Thank you very much. And beware of the credit assistance you give. Thanks so much for watching Broker Alerts. We work hard to alert residential mortgage brokers in Australia to laws, fraud, actions and operators within the industry who can harm or destroy your career. We want to know what you think and what you want us to cover. So please leave your comments below and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.